Good morning, everybody. Well, I'm saying good morning because I'm on the West Coast still and here it's 6.30 in the morning, but that's okay. I'm up and I'm ready and it's gonna be a great day because today is pub day in the literary world. Every Tuesday, all the new books come out. If you didn't know that, which by the way, I did not know until I got into this industry in any sort of working capacity. But anyway, Tuesday is pub day and today there are many great books pubbing, including uh, This Will All Be Over Soon, by Cecily Strong, who's gonna join us in a minute. She has been on um, Saturday Night Live for about 10 years, which I'm embarrassed to say I often, almost always cannot stay up to watch, but um, obviously it's amazing. And she has written a fantastic book. And by the way, tonight I will be at Pages, a bookstore in Manhattan Beach um, at 6 p.m. Pacific time with author Nicola Harrison. And I will be celebrating her book, The Showgirl. So that should be really fun too. And today in this Instagram live, I'm going to be talking about This Will All Be Over Soon by Cecily Strom. Well, I try not to sneeze because my allergies are so bad in the mornings. Sorry about that. Um, so while we wait for her to join, I can just tell you this is a beautiful memoir about Cecily and it's basically written in diary form about how she, oh, here she is, hold on, about how she made her way through the pandemic and how she coped, oops, that's the wrong person, how she coped with grief, losing her cousin, dealing with the pandemic, and all the rest of that stuff. So hold on one second. There we go. Um, it says Cecily Strong must upgrade app in order to join. I don't know what that means, um, but that doesn't sound good. <laughs> so, um, I don't know, Cecily, if you have to upgrade your Instagram app um, uh, or if it hasn't been upgraded in a while or something. I don't know, but that's what it's saying. Cecily Strong must upgrade app in order to join. So I'm just going to keep talking, I guess, for a few minutes while you um, go into the app store and like see if there's an update or something, or if there's another phone nearby and you want to text me and uh, tell me where you want to join from or... Um, yeah, it doesn't work on a computer. It only works on a phone. Uh, so let's see. I'm not sure what to do, but you'll, I don't know. You, maybe you could try to figure it out or um, let's see. I don't know. I guess Cecily has to update, upgrade the app or maybe maybe on an iPad if you have an iPad um, instead of your iPhone. Um, I don't know. These Instagram can be a little bit tricky sometimes with the upgrades and everything. Meanwhile, as I was saying about her book, while she figures that out, um, this will all be over soon, is about the tragic loss of Cecily's cousin, Owen, who, um, oh wait, here she comes again. Let's see if this works. There we go. I was a little bit worried about that, but clearly needlessly, because here she comes. Um, I have to blow my nose. Oh. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> Perfect timing. Oh, wow. I'm so sorry. Hi. Hi, how are you? Happy pub day to you. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Great excuse. Reason to um, upgrade my Instagram. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Never, <laughs> I've never seen that before with all the various. Well, you'll happen. see it all with me. I do everything wrong. Tech no, wise. stop it. <laughs> well, congratulations. As you know, I just loved your book from the second I started reading it months ago or whenever I got it. This will all be over soon. I'm so excited for you that it's out in the world today. How do you feel about it? I'm it's strange. I don't know quite. It's still early, so I don't know how I feel. Maybe I won't know until afternoon. I can't feel like 10. <laughs> right, a little away. Yes, exactly. But Wait. I'm very happy. You, you've been so nice and um, since early on. So I really appreciate you and, and even you doing this today. Oh my gosh, it's my pleasure. Um, you know, the book resonated with me on so many levels. One, the loss of your cousin and how beautifully you write about that and how you flash back and show us all about him as a person, right? This isn't just about your loss. It's about celebrating right. him. And now yeah. we all know him and your other cousin and how your relationship evolved and how amazing and supportive he was and and the impact of that loss on you but also how you took us through the pandemic and how you showed us how so like so many other people people aren't only grieving loss because of covid during covid right it's like there's so many other things that happen in life that happen along the way and you even you know, when you have that funny line about like yeah i'm going to talk to you about boy troubles in the middle of a pandemic you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, yeah life goes on so tell me a little bit about what 
made you write this book? How, why did you decide to publish this book? I feel like you wrote it for you. Why did this become a book sure. for everyone? You know, I think after doing the first essay, sharing that with New York Magazine, I think um, I just had a lot of people reach out to me and it seemed like it was maybe helpful for some people. And I thought, you know, early on when I lost Owen, I didn't know how to write about him. I didn't know how to talk about it. And then, um, but it felt like, okay, if people are maybe going to feel helped in any way, it, that's the best way I could think of to share my cousin and be able to share him. It's yeah. like, it, it feels like an active thing, publishing this book. That's like an active way to, sh that Owen's still going, that his story's still going. It's so true. Um, you had a lot of beautiful passages about grief, but I just wanted to read this one tiny section um, when you were talking. This is from, and I love how you dated. It's all in diary form, which I love. This is like the Bridget Jones diary of grief. Anyway, this is from April 17th, 2020. And you say, do you also cry yourself to sleep so often? I keep approaching okay, but I'm never fully there. I'll only ever be okay adjacent. I'm everything adjacent because words are hard to find these days. I'm living life adjacent right now. I love that. That was so pretty. I feel okay. like so, so many people are living life adjacent these days. Um, what, can you take us back to how it felt back then in April when the world was like upside down and you had just been bopping around your Airbnb and right. coping with everything? I mean, I think because writing this book was such a, a very like it was a kind of a magical experience for me personally and a lot of catharsis kind of every day and you know because I'm trying to understand Owen and his positivity he sort of gave that to my life during that time and so I was making these connections and it felt like they were gifts and I think I, you know, I would write during the day. I was in an Airbnb with my friends, Matt and Kevin. And I feel like the other love story in the book is uh, my friend, Kevin, who I live with now in the Hudson Valley. Um, but so I would write during the day and kind of sit with myself and go through something and then had to let it go. And then I'd, we'd go to do like a family dinner and then Kevin would read out loud so I could hear it and it would maybe make us cry or we'd talk about it. And then it was kind of like got to release that and then maybe have like a little dance party after dinner, you know? Yeah. Um, tell me a little, also you wrote a lot about your childhood and growing up and this crazy situation where you ended up like basically getting kicked out of school and having a, I mean, life could have gone a lot of different ways for you. I feel like at that point. Yes. I mean, that was insane. So in case people don't know about what happened, can you talk? So I, that? yes, my sophomore year of high school, I bought my first bag of pot, you know, real seedy and gross, but it was like, you know, I felt cool, I guess. And I bought it with my friend and I left my book bag to do just like in the green room. I did a lot of theater in high school. I put it somewhere with a friend and to audition for the shadow box. And then uh, uh, they found my backpack and went through it and found the pot and I was expelled and I was handcuffed and walked out of the school. I can't believe it. Yeah. I mean, of all the things for the tiniest little thing. Um, wow. And then you had to figure out sort of how to land on your feet for the first of many times when you found right. upside down and having to re rethink life. Certainly, it was the first time of, you know, realizing my life's not going to go the way I had thought it would or that I see other people's go. I was very lucky, you know, I'm, I'm privileged enough that it didn't destroy my, you know, I got to go to a Catholic school, I, I got to, I got it expunged, you know, I did community service. Um, but then even, you know, then I went back to high school and dealt with some pretty bad depression and I wasn't going to graduate on time. And it's like, I was a straight A student and I was going to have to be a fifth year senior because I didn't have enough gym credits. So then I dropped out and wasn't sure if I would ever graduate high school. I was like, I guess I'll just get my GED. But then I found um, an art school in Chicago and sort of found my people. And I felt like 
I was very quiet for, I just felt like very small and like I couldn't speak. And then I went to this art school and it was like, I found my people. There's, I, I haven't, I can't slip through the cracks here. And I just, I, I was voted best personality my senior year at that high school. And it felt like that was my, was a huge accomplishment. It's, I, it is a bit of a brag, me saying that, but it was also <laughs> such a big accomplishment because I felt like I didn't speak or smile a lot for the year before that. Well, you can brag about that all you want. This is your <laughs> touch. By the way, somebody in the comments just asked, are we doing a podcast? I just wanted to say um, this is this will be a podcast on Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. So if you want to listen to the whole thing or if you miss some or whatever, people can, can hear the whole thing soon um, over there. Um, Tell me a little bit about you lost the, the, I can't remember what exactly role he played on Saturday Night Live, the costume or makeup or some, the man who uh, ended up passing away. Hal, well, no, mu music producer. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'm sorry. My, my mind sorry. goes so far. I mean, it's early, but whatever. Anyway. Um, he kind of did a lot, so. <laughs> <laughs> but that, um, that also was really uh you know, one of those first, the per first person you really knew who passed away from COVID. And that was, you know, obviously brought up all the loss from the months before when you had lost Owen. Um, tell me about that and how you had to cope with that on top of everything else. Yeah. And that was when it was just with COVID, I think it was so fast. And I just remember being outside, um, hanging out with friends and looking at Facebook and my friend Yoni, who was like Hal number one. Hal is knows everybody and has worked with everyone you've ever thought was cool. Hal's worked <laughs> with them and was like the first person you'd see and notice if you walk into SNL. Like he's got his hat on and his big beard, and he's always kind of looks like he's up to something. And um, it was my friend Yoni posted something that's like, "I love you, Hal. We'll miss you." And it was like, "What?" Just sort of stop in your track and. And I had I started texting my friend who's a producer at SNL and she said, yeah, he passed away from COVID. And I think like the night Hal died in New York, I think there were something like 600 people. It was just like, these are that's so many people. If you think about one of them being the most singular, unique, out of this world human beings you've ever met. And he's one of these 600, it just, you know, uh, these numbers are really overwhelming to see because they're not numbers, they're people. And everybody has a story and everybody has a network and everybody right. has so much love in the world and so much loss and grief. It's overwhelming. It's sometimes, you know, it makes yeah. me panic to think about it. Too. <laughs> yeah. It. Over right. It. Overwhelming. Um, so you turn to comedy in the end, right? And here mm -hmm. you are with this like hugely successful career, which by the way, when you read the book, all you're doing is like rooting for you, right? So I feel like if people didn't know you before and they read the book, like you now have all these people just being like, you can do it, you can do it. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, she's making it through and how great. And anyway, um, how has comedy sort of helped you through some of the hardest parts? Um, well, I think it's always been a part of my life. And I think, I think laughter is a, goes hand in hand with tragedy and um, how we cope. And it is its own little mini cathartic moment. You know, even I, I tell a story in the book about at Owen's service, um, I tried to, I spoke and I tried to say something. I tried to get a couple of laughs, you know, probably not a, my, a great stand up routine, but I know that he would have appreciated that. And his friend came up to me after and he said, I think Owen would have liked that. And then he said, I was holding it together so well, like, because it was stoic and it was all sad and serious. And he said, and the minute I laughed, it was like the tears came and it just allowed him to, to feel it. Oh my gosh, it's so heartbreaking. Um, is there anything in here that like, especially today on Pub Day, you're like, <laughs> oh gosh, I can't believe I put that out there. You know what I mean? Like, eh, I don't know. I don't know if one's more than another. Um, I, I think what's good about the book is that I, I don't, I, get, I suppose if you took one thing out, it could maybe make me uncomfortable, but like everything in it together, it's all part of the same thing. And I think it's just, it's all, nothing should be taken out as its own 
unique experience. It's all been there. And, and I certainly, you know, I didn't write this because I want anyone to feel bad for me. I wrote it because I wanted to just add my voice to the things that I think a lot of people in America deal with, you know? No, and it doesn't come across as, um, as some sort of, you know, self, it's, it's not like a feel sorry for me, self-involved thing. This is right. very, Good. you're sharing your story from your heart and there's no real bigger gift than when people do that. Cause all you're trying to do is connect, right? You're trying to yeah. get there and connect to others and acknowledge that your experience is universal. And no, I didn't take it as a reader at all in that okay. way. And I, and yeah, I, I hope, you know, my hope is that people who need it, who may find this book, take a moment for themselves and check in with themselves and, and see if they're doing okay. Because I don't know that we check in with ourselves enough, especially right now. I think it was a really hard year. And I think um, there's this like push. Now we're vaccinated. We're okay. And it's sort of, we're not quite out of it. And we may be holding on to some trauma we may not understand everybody on some level and even if you think well I don't have it as bad as someone else just checking in with yourself doesn't doesn't take away from anything and it'll make you be a better support system to somebody else anyway if you check in with yourself and make sure you're doing okay it's very true um it's very important there's so many people going through so much and um, that's also just a fantastic reminder. Um, my husband and I, Kyle, we were on Good Day LA yesterday recommending your book. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> oh, sure. He was like, this is such a great title. You know, it's like, that. <laughs> I think it's like, but it's so true. I mean, it's like, I hope so. Like there have been 57 times since I've been like holding your book in my purse for the last like two weeks where I'm like, oh, I could just pull this book out for now. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you, you need this messaging all the time. So um, oh, thank you. And, it's it's very important. Um, well, just last thing, do you have any advice for other people who are aspiring writers who maybe want to share their story in the selfless way that you've done? I think just sitting and writing. I mean, it's really as simple as that. I never wanted to, you know, I didn't train to be a writer or anything. So I don't, I'm not going to write the great American novel. But what I can do is like, be as honest with myself as possible. And I think just sitting and writing every day was allowed me to see these little connections and give myself magic and stories to, to understand and process my, my losses and my loves. And it was a lot about love. You know, it's really just exploring the love I've gotten to have in my life. Well, Cecily, I'm really, really sorry for your loss. And I'm really grateful to you for introducing us all to Owen and mm -hmm. having you back out in the world in this form and keeping him alive in our thoughts. I mean, that's like all we can really do. Sorry, my allergies. And he's got music, um, which is also, and I'm so glad it's good music, but if you ever <laughs> want to hear his voice and his songs, um, they're called The Evening Fools, his band on Spotify. Uh, I highly recommend. Perfect. All right. Well, this will all be over soon. Cecily Strong, everybody go out and buy this book, please. And if you want to hear the rest of this from start to finish, go to Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. And Cecily, congratulations. I'm so thrilled for you. I'll be here clapping as one of your many, many fans um, for this memoir and everything else. So congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm sorry okay. about my Instagram. No, I'm sorry <laughs> about my, you know, horrific allergies and, you know. So. It's real. It's real life. Real life. Yeah. All right. Well, have a great pub day. Right. Thank okay. you. Bye.